Welcome to this rebroadcast featuring Chris Shea of Life's Journey Life Coaching and author Lisa DeLay. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Started with a little introduction, or do you want to go? Uh, why don't you uh, start with the introductions, and I will follow that up. Yeah, so thanks for joining us. We like to, Chris and I like to meet a couple times a month and do some live discussions. And we've kind of paired off as co-hosts because we have some really nice overlapping areas that we're both interested in, in terms of spirituality and just self-improvement and all kinds of things like that. Chris has focused a lot on mindfulness and we both have podcasts. And so there's a lot of nice overlap and we've had some fantastic discussions live and some great participation. So also this isn't just for us to chat. If you wanna participate, if you wanna join in and call in, there's two seats available and we're always happy to hear from people out there. So my name is Lisa DeLay and I have a podcast that I put out twice a week at sparkmymuse.com, also on iTunes, Google Play, now on Google Play, um, Stitcher, <laughs> where, where else? Like, like Spreaker, Stitcher, Spreaker, I don't know. That's probably it. There might be more, but that, that'll do. <laughs> Find your favorite one, just search for you, and I'm sure it's there. It's there somewhere. Uh, oh, yeah, one more thing. Uh, this week is the first, my first year anniversary of podcasting, and so I'm doing a lot of fun stuff this week, and I'm calling it Week of Sparkle, and I'm auctioning off weird, unusual, funny, uh, and some treats and goodies actually at an eBay auction. So actually, if you search Week of Sparkle on eBay, you'll find all these weird things that I put up for auction. I'm going to do some contests you can find on Twitter if you search Week of Sparkle. So it's just gonna be a lot of really corny stuff. Some stuff so corny, you're gonna be like, she needs to go on some meds. So um, it's just for fun. So just to kind of celebrate one year of this and uh, as a way to celebrate. Oh, that's wonderful. I'll have to go check that out. And uh, I'm Chris Shea, and my main website is called lifesjourneyblog.com. And I'm a counselor and uh, also do have a podcast. And you can uh, find me at, um, uh, where would that be? I'm on iTunes and Stitcher and Spreaker and SoundCloud and all of those. Mm -hmm. uh, and the show is called I'm Finding Peace. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can find that there. And, uh, Hopefully this coming week I'll have some new content with uh, some new intros and outros. So Ooh. I've been uh, working on those. Yeah, we're getting a little fancy. <laughs> uh, so I'm hoping to premiere those this week. We'll, we'll see how the week goes. Yeah. Uh, but um, as Lisa mentioned, we do this every couple of weeks. And uh, glad you're all here. And please share with your friends. And uh, mm -hmm. let's see how many people we can get actively participating so we can all learn from each other. Yeah, and we're going to try to talk about peace today. We're, we, we're focusing on for April. We're trying to focus on nature and springtime. Now that the weather, at least in our, we're basically both in the northeast of the United States. And so not everybody who's listening necessarily will be from our region, our general region, but we're experiencing springtime here and getting outside mm -hmm. more. And so we're thinking, well, what can we, how can we tie this in with, our inner world and what we're working on in our inner world. And we're thinking getting in touch with nature is going to be something a lot of people are doing. And so that's kind of what we concentrated on about two weeks ago. And we're going to do that again. So it would be good to see what's on your mind, Chris, in terms of inner peace and reconnecting with nature. There's a lot of thoughts on that. I, I love nature. In one sentence, no. so, <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> I failed that quiz right now. Um, I mean, if it weren't getting so dark out, I was thinking of actually uh, doing this lab outside yeah, so that I can you know, say, hey, look, we're, look, I'm in nature. Look at this. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the, the sun is setting, so I, I won't uh, put people through that. But the title of uh, this episode is uh, Be at Peace Like a Rock, uh, How Nature Leads Us to Inner Peace. And uh, 
the philosophical Zen side of me, uh, I think it was at play when we came up with this uh, title, but the short of it, and we'll get into the details, is that I think for many of us, we try to not be who we are. We always try yeah. to be somebody different. Yeah. And if we look at nature, nature, at least to my knowledge, doesn't do that. So if you have a rock, a rock is going to be a rock. If you have a tree, a tree is going to be a tree and, and so on. So I think part of what takes away our inner peace and what can bring us uh, inner peace is finding out how we can be true to ourselves uh, by taking example of the natural world and mm. notice how you know the the nature does what nature does and does it well uh, you know probably on purpose because it is just doing what it does so that's mm. kind of the short of what I was looking at. Mm. Hopefully we get some people to chime in on how to be a rock. <laughs> or a tree or a, you know, an animal or whatever. I, you know, I just said rock to say rock. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that a little bit. And I, you know, was thinking, um, you know, when you put that title up, I was like, oh, tall order. I don't know. <laughs> because um, I was listening to this other podcast and it was it was awesome. I had there. Mike uh, McHart, I'm going to say it wrong too, probably. Mike McHart, he's also called Science Mike. And you can, the podcast he does is Ask Science Mike. And the other one he does is The Liturgist. He does it with some other, some other folks too. And what he mm -hmm. said, uh, I love him. He's going to be on my podcast. I cannot wait. He's, we're we're going to record something in uh, and towards the end of May. And oh, cool. Yeah, he has a, has a really neat story. But one of the things he said on one of his podcasts were, was that we have a lizard brain wrapped in a monkey brain wrapped in a human brain. <laughs> and I love the I way, like it. right? <laughs> and so <laughs> the whole the whole idea is like if you think of it like that, you know, the lizard the lizard brain, if you will, is that like you know, it's the, the aggressive, like feels threatened, you know, is, is going to be like kill or be killed. And then, and also the, uh, le, like, uh, let's mate right now and procreate. And then, and also the, um, you know, anger or whatever, all those really raw emotions where right. we react instead of respond, you know, that's the lizard, like the total mm -hmm. primal. And, and later on you can, you know, you can control that. Some people seem to have more control of, than others. And then on that brain, you have like the monkey brain or whatever. And, and that's, you know, more refined, but still has all these more social, you know, still has all these baggage and there's hierarchy and there's power and there's ego and there's all this stuff going on as you would expect, you know, it's still kind of held back. And then you have the human brain, which can kind of be aware of the other brains, which is really neat. Mm -hmm. And also really troubling, you know, like, because then we get anxious and we can, we can think about ourselves thinking, you know, we can right. think about it <laughs> and, and that actually winds up getting us into trouble. Like it can give us peace if we can get distance from the mm -hmm. other chatter, but it can also, if there isn't any distance, if we're not able to chill out and think and, and get away from those other brains, if you will, the entanglement there, it, it's really hard to be human because we think about our mortality and we think about the future. Mm -hmm. We think about the past and we, and so we have all these competing really consciousness loops going on. And, you know, right. monkeys don't care about art. Monkeys don't care about religion. <laughs> monkeys don't care okay. about, you know, some of the other, you know, doing good in the world, making the world a better place. Monkeys don't give a crap about that. <laughs> so we have the human Not aspect typically. that, not that I know of. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe exactly. I'll get a letter. I might get a letter one day. I love your podcast, Lisa. <laughs> you know, my my monkeys, my monkey family and I are doing really well now. Um, but, you know, that's kind of a, was a really interesting way to put it. And he, he said that's why some of these things like mantras and like prayer beads and things where you can do things repetitively, um, people will say, you know, 
what's that what's that nonsense about but actually what it does is it throws your monkey brain off the trail and gives that mm -hmm. something to do and then you're uh, you can distance from it and i was like whoa i didn't think it's a technique it's just a technique to give that chatter something to do while the other part of your your human part of your mind gets some distance and, and your consciousness can do some quieter work on its own and i, I was like right. so that's the way you could maybe get some distance and and be the rock maybe you know but i was thinking that disentangling from those other sort of prim more primal parts of yourself that, that would be mm -hmm. a one way to take a crack at it right because you know pulling away and you know as you say that that becomes very difficult because we do spend a lot of time uh you know kind of in our brains and a lot of time focused on uh either the past whether it's you know positive things or negative things and not the future but i also think when we look at our society that the way, especially in advertising and all, the way that it's uh, portrayed to us as to how we should be, and that's a word uh, we really need to stay away from, but how we should be, then we start to doubt ourselves as to who I am, and I want to look at, uh, you know, maybe imitating somebody else or how do we be, I become, uh, you know, a different person. And I think that stress of, of trying to be something that you're innately not is going to lead to a lot of internal turmoil and stress. Mm. You know, as you try to reshape yourself in, into some other persona uh, that you think is going to bring you more friends mm. or more, uh, you know, dates or that's just the way society wants it. Um, and, and yeah. that in and of itself is going to bring that stress. And, and I think mm -hmm. when we look at nature, and, and even though, you know, I'm not comparing nature to, you know, the sentient beings that we are, but just in, in its base way, um, you know, anything out in nature, a rock, a tree, a plant, whatever it is, um, it just in its way tries to be the best of what it is. You know, and, and that's where, you know, when, when the tree is, is, say, growing up, you know, you, you don't have the tree try to imitate the bush because it thinks the bush is prettier. Uh, you know, <laughs> the tree just does what the tree does. It grows and it has a purpose and it shares mm -hmm. its purpose. Uh, and I would tend to think that if rocks and trees and whatever had uh, the ability to think and all, would they be less stressed because they're not trying to be something that they're not? Hmm. Well, you know, what you're saying about identity is, is really interesting. That's actually for um, James Prescott and I concentrate on a theme each month. And for May, it's actually identity. And I was, so I've been thinking a lot about identity and what you're saying, you know, a tree is a tree, a rock's a rock, you know, and they, they all do, mm -hmm. and, and a bird, you know, as a bird, it seems like it's on a program and it does, like right now, birds are making nests like crazy. They're taking string. I don't know where these birds are getting string, but they're putting <laughs> string in the nest all over our house. And mm -hmm. I'm like, what's going on? But they're on a program and if they don't hurry up and build their nests, they can't put their eggs in there. And last year, my husband was like, what did this crazy bird build this nest right, right by our air conditioner? It's like really poorly it's not going to go well. So he quick took the nest mm -hmm. out. Well, the birds build a nest like two feet away as fast as they possibly could. It was a shabby nest and their eggs fell out. That was really my husband's fault, you know, because he destroyed their nest. But they were on a program mm -hmm. to quick build a nest in the same place. And they're not really worried about being another animal or, you know, they're just trying to do what they do every year. And when you think about identity, you know, they don't have an, any identity crisis, right? They, they just do what they do. And, but, but humans have always are having identity crisis, whether it's like a role or a time in your life. You know, some people, I, I was thinking recently about, I was explaining to my daughter who Prince was because he just died. And she's like, you know, who's Prince? 
and said, well, you know what? The neat thing about Prince, not that I liked every single thing that he did, but the one thing you could say about Prince is that he kind of didn't care what people thought and he didn't fit like a, a gender stereotype or a racial stereotype, a genre stereotype. He was just like, you know what? I'm an artist. I'm a creative person. I don't mm -hmm. care what you think about me. I'm going to just do whatever I want. And so he gave people the courage to kind of just create what you want to create, be the kind of person you want to be. If you want to change it the next year, if you want to not have a name for a couple of years, <laughs> you exactly. know, whatever. Be a symbol, you know. Yeah, just be a symbol, the artist formerly known. And But what was, mm -hmm. you know, but people don't have the guts to do that and realize that identity is actually really changeable and it's actually added on to who we are. It's, it's not, right. we think, oh, we have to find our identity, but actually it's always a construct. And I think that Prince would toy with that. You know, and we think, mm -hmm. and we think, oh, well, I have to find my identity. It's like, well, you're going to always, you're always really going to be finding it. And, and right. the neat thing is, is that if you think of it that way, you know, that, you know, birds and rocks and trees don't ever worry about finding their identity so much as we do, or we stress out about it. You know, we're like, mm -hmm. what am I now? You know, I hope I find myself. And it's just like, actually, if you just chill out, your identity will sort of find you and and you can kind of just, just kind of be, and you're gonna always be unique because there's only one of you out there. Um, but but it is identity is a really, it can be really tricky. And I think as humans, we are mm -hmm. we're, we're so social, we really get wrapped up in it, and and it's right. gives us a lot of unrest and a lot of disquiet. And and sometimes it really matters that we stake out a specific I, i'm not saying that we shouldn't ever stake out a specific identity i'm just saying that it give, it puts a lot of tumult potentially into our hearts right and and i think because of us being social creatures combined with our ability to think and process that that's where the confusion comes in as for our identities because we want to join the social group and our thinking and the thought process because we want to join the group and be like the group and be accepted by the group we tend to change that identity and and somebody like you mentioned you know uh, prince that he didn't care what the social group thought he yeah. was going to be him at the moment yeah. you know and and i don't like all of his stuff i do like some of his stuff um, but that is something I respect him for, you know, yeah. and, and there were certain phases where I didn't like him, but I still respected him for yeah. just standing up and saying, this is who I am. If you don't like it, didn't care. don't buy my music. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, don't come see me, don't, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think that that's part of it, you know, where when we look at nature, even in the natural world where there's uh, social gatherings of animals, mm. I think because they're missing that thought process, that they don't try to necessarily change who they are. You know, they may compete for a head of a herd or, you know, right. uh, spots like that, but they're not changing who they are. They're just competing for a certain spot. Mm -hmm. um, I saw a show not too long ago and, and it uh, noted this uh, pack of wolves and um, might have been in Alaska or some cold place. I don't know. And, what was interesting they showed from the air this pack of wolves on the move and then they walk in single file mm. but what they said was the weakest and the sick wolves or the wounded wolves they go at the front of the line mm. now right before them are going to be a couple of the strongest wolves for protection but what the scientists speculate is yeah. that they put them at the front of the line because the line is only protected if it's together and you're only going to move together as quickly as your slowest member is going to move yeah. mm -hmm. and, and it's interesting that they do understand that social aspect but at the same time none of those wolves are trying to be something they're not they know their role and yeah. they kind of knew where to go in line as to what their role is without worrying about, you know, am I slowing them down? Am I whatever? Mm. Um, and they had strong wolves at the front, strong wolves at the back for protection from the rear and from the front. And the rest of the pack just kind of 
yeah. followed along and, and just kept pace with the slowest wolf yeah. there. And, you know, when you think about that, I think for us, that would probably be an opportunity for somebody to try to be different, or I don't want to be known as the slowest wolf. You know, I don't want to be known as the one holding up the line or something. Mm. Um, because if these scientists are true, I don't think the other ones would be looking that they're holding up the line. They're just looking at reality. You're slower. That's reality. So we're going to follow you so you don't trail behind and possibly get, you know, taken. Mm. Mm. But, you know, I, I think how much can we just kind of focus on what is real and just accept the reality and move forward in this acceptance of, you know, this is who I am and that's okay. And I'm not like the other, mm -hmm. but that's okay. You know, and, and can we hope that society will stay with us in, in that mm -hmm. sense? Chris, do you think, was there a time in your life that you went from feeling one way like that to, to feeling another, to, to moving past that? Do, like, can you think of any concrete examples in your own life? Probably the biggest one for me in life was most of my childhood and into high school years, mm. I was extremely shy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I wouldn't get up in front of people and talk or I wouldn't, you know, raise my hand in class, you know, if I was going to be the only one, so to speak. Um, but I would talk to the people I know, but I wouldn't introduce myself to people. So the friends I had were those who came to me. I was just too shy to you know, do that. But over time, I've been able to make that change myself where I can do things like this. And you know, I teach at, at a university and I give lectures around the country. And, you know, not to say I don't get nervous at any of those times, but you know, looking back, if, if I would have said to myself way back, you know, in high school, you know, hey, one day you're going to be doing, uh, you know, talks at, you know, big national conferences around the country. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, like, nah, that, that's not going to happen. I, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I think that would be one of the biggest outward changes. Um, mm -hmm. But I think in a lot of ways, it's still being true to me because that's now my way of being able to express what's inside of me. Whereas before all of that was just locked in hmm. and, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't be able to get out. So I don't necessarily see that as a change in my core being just hmm. another way of expressing, uh, you know, what's going on inside of me. Yeah. 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 I think, and everybody has to, everybody has to kind of probably get there in their own way where they, Mm -hmm. You know, because as I was, as I was like, I was mentioning to you about talking to my daughter, she says she's only 13. And when you're an adolescent, I don't know that you can get past all those social because you just become socially yeah. aware in the extreme. <laughs> and she, yeah. she's saying things to me that I totally, totally remember being in middle school and thinking how important it was to match my outfits and make them really, really nice. And, you know, um, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, Rhiannon says, there's a fine line between overcoming a challenge like shyness to be yourself versus changing yourself from reserved to outgoing person that you aren't intrinsically. Yeah, there is. And as I was, as I was speaking with my daughter about, um, you know, going, moving, think, telling her, you know, it's normal developmentally to think a lot about yourself and think about, when you go into a group, everybody's thinking about me and what I'm wearing and what I'm doing, and what I'm saying and how I look. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she'll go, oh, my voice went really high a second ago. I just can't believe it. <laughs> and she's just thinking, thinking, thinking. And that especially everybody her age is thinking the exact same thing. And they're actually not spending a lot of time thinking about her. And it's hard for her to realize right. that right now. <laughs> um, and then. Oh, yeah, I'm not, not at that age. No. And then later on, even if people are thinking that of you, even if people are, are overthinking and thinking about every little teeny thing about you, at a certain point you go, yeah, but I can't do anything about it. I can't, I can't help if this person <laughs> thinks whatever about me. Like, even if it drives me crazy and I'm getting anxious about it, it's really bugging me. I can't do anything about it. So, so like you, some people get to the point where they're like, yeah, I guess I'm weird. I guess I'm, 
I, yeah. And then some people are just totally bothered and they never get to a point where there's a self acceptance or, and, and what I've found for myself is totally going through that adolescent period and probably even beyond where I was just like, you know, really concerned, really thinking about like, mm -hmm. like anybody else. And, and then kind of thinking, well, you know, like, I guess I can't do anything about it, but then also thinking, um, it's really the other person's problem if they, I mean, it reflects more about another person, what, what they're thinking about someone else than it does about me. Like I'm realizing kind of like, that's kind of their thing. It's not really about me. So like when people per perceive something about someone else, I, I really, and, and it's the same goes for me. Like if I'm going around and going, everybody around here is so judgmental. Well, what, what am I really think? What am mm -hmm. that tells about me? That doesn't tell anything about anybody else. Do you know what I mean? So right. I'm realizing that if people think something about me, it often has a lot to do with them and they're bringing that in. And so it's like when you kind of get back behind it, you kind of get into the brains of what's going on in, in another person, the psychology part of it, you can mm -hmm. have some distance and not be as anxious and not be as self-conscious. And that plays a lot into identity then because you can kind of release, sure. you can kind of release some of that anxiety and, and then it goes a long way to just becoming who you really are and being comfortable in your mm -hmm. own skin. And I thank God that happens it, to me anyway, more and more as the older I get. I'm like, you know what? Some people are going to like me. Some people aren't for reasons I can't control. <laughs> oh, well, mm -hmm. like, uh, I mean, uh, people who, who know me, I have friends that I, that I've known since I was, you know, eight years old, we're still friends. Like that's, that's normal for mm -hmm. me. I, I make really good friends. And yeah, there's people who don't like me, but that's really rare. I meet people and we're friends for decades and decades and decades. And mm -hmm. I think that's, and if that doesn't happen, that's okay. Um, we're going to both right. be okay, but usually it works out fine. And I think it's because mm -hmm. I can see good in other people. And usually that just bounces back and it all works out right. because if you, if you, both come at it that way that's how it works if you, you know, so, right. um, yeah so and, yeah and i think you know a part of that comes in with the different stages of our life mm -hmm. you know that we're not necessarily changing our core who we are we may change how we react to life and how we perceive life and you know all of those aspects but you know, we can really still be who we, in our core, who are we, and then still be that person. But as we enter different life stages, there's going to be those different challenges, you know, and opportunities, I think, for growth and improvement. And at least in my way of thinking this through, that growth and improvement sure is change, but that's not me trying to be somebody else. You know, that, that's me trying to be a better me. Yeah. And when we look at nature, you know, anything that's growing is trying to, I would assume, be the best it can be. Um, but the tree is still the tree, whether it's the best tree or not the best tree. You know, and, and I'm going to be me whether I'm being my best or not my best. Mm. Uh, so I, I do think that some of that just comes, you know, like you're saying with your daughter. Yeah, I mean what teenager isn't worried about how they look and how they sound and what people yeah. think about them. And, you know, that, that I think is part of my shyness at that period, you know, that, yeah. that fear that if I say something wrong or my voice cracks or whatever it may be, then I'll be made fun of and I'll look a fool and, yeah. and all that. But sure with age, uh, that's what I found is I'm at that point now, as you're saying, I mean, I, I don't care. You know, I, I hope people like me, but if you don't, I, you know, what am I going to do about it? Um, and because it, it isn't tied in with who I am anymore. Yeah. You know, and I think the more we become comfortable with ourselves, then the less we're going to care. And it's not like I'm walking around trying to be, you know, hurtful to people. But mm. but if you don't like who I am for whatever reason it might be, then, well, you don't. Uh, you know, and, and, and I'm not going to lose sleep over that, you know. And, <laughs> but I, I think one thing I've also noticed and over the years come to understand, most people aren't looking at me anyways. 
I know. So now, you know, how do I sound like? Most people don't even know I'm around. You know? <laughs> so in a day-to-day -day life, I, you know, you may think, oh, everybody sees, you know, like this people, or everybody sees, whatever. Most it's very small. Exist. Yeah, that's what was it. Dr. Phil said something like, "People think so little of you. You you won't worry. You won't worry what people think about you when you realize how little they think of you." And I think he meant. Well, yeah. I guess it's a double entendre, but I think he meant people don't tend to think about you as much as you think about yourself. In comparison, you think about yourself this much. Right. People think about you. You know, a teeny weeny bit, you know, <laughs> and so really the amount of time you're spending on what people think of you, so out right. of proportion, what people are, exactly. time people are spending thinking about you, they'll they'll give you a, a passing thought once in a while, but but that time is so wasted that you could channel it into creative projects, or you could channel it into helping other people, or mm -hmm. right. yourself, or all kinds of things, and but we'll spin on that like a spindle will brrr, and like oh maybe i sounded stupid or oh maybe i sounded and the chances are and this is the other thing is just not taking yourself very seriously in the sense of like um yeah i might have sounded stupid there okay i'm, I'm kind of silly sometimes i kind of screw up sometimes like it, it just when you think you're when you think you're really really impressive or you're oh i oh i have a master's degree oh, i should i should sound really erudite and i should i should sound <laughs> I should be very impressive to people and I should cite all my resources and it's just like well am I thinking a lot of myself or I sometimes I say and do silly things and sometimes silly things come out of my mouth sometimes I'm just silly and I'm okay with that like you have to kind of just back off uh, and not take yourself like you're the big cheese of, you know like I don't know maybe that's a really stupid thing to say and but that's that's what I'm exactly what I'm talking about. Like that mm -hmm. as soon as you start thinking you smell great all the time, it's like you kind of like off the track. You're kind of thinking, you know, you're just a regular person like everybody else. So I don't know. Like right. it's like you're saying too, like if, if you really think that people are staying up late at night thinking about all the things you said. <laughs> I mean, it's just not true. It's just not no. happening. And, so, and, and, and that becomes a, a, a very humbling notion when we can finally come to that realization that the people who are closest to us and the people who really love us, mm. sure, they're probably thinking of us and what's going on. Beyond that circle, no, you know, you, you're a blip in, in their day. Yeah. You know, and, and, I think a way to look at that is when you look at it, you know, from our own perspective, you know, when I look at, you know, the people that, you know, I interacted with today, uh, you know, beyond me mentioning it now, uh, what deep thought am I going to put into them? Hmm. And, and I don't think that's a negative and that's not putting them down at all, but in, in the scope of what's going on in life and my own family, you know, I, I'm not putting deep thought into well, what are they doing now or what's going on right but i i think part of that problem too is, is the way social media has scarred mm. uh, you know uh, our society that um you know people think now everything that i post and everything that i do is you know the, these wonderful words of wisdom or that everybody wants to see it and uh you know i think the reality for many people is no you know and, and those who do do and hopefully appreciate it but uh just because you have a computer and an ability to write something doesn't mean everybody cares yeah or or they care a total of three seconds yeah. and and it was really it was really meaningful like i've seen things that are like wow even even stuff that mm -hmm. i've seen that's made me cry um you know something really amazing but the next right. day I might forget it, even though it's been pretty powerful, but like, it's not mm -hmm. that it's not there forever. And just realizing the fleeting nature, even of people right. you really, and the other thing, the other thing that, that brought, that came to mind based on what you were saying is that I was talking about this to a close friend of mine that I take walks with on a, on a fairly regular basis. And she, as she's, we've taken walks in the last 20 years, I'm so thankful that she's one, you know, she's my, one of my best friends. 
And mm -hmm. she's come to a point where, as, a, as I have too, but it's really been powerful for her, where she has um, realized who she should impress in a way. Like she's been worried right. about the wrong, impressing the wrong people, the people who are closest mm -hmm. to her in a way haven't mattered as much as impressing the people she kind of doesn't know. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, I hope mm -hmm. this person that that treated me bad over here that kind of doesn't know me thinks I'm pretty awesome. But my own right. family members, I, I'm not going to pay as much attention to them or whatever, whatever the case may be. Uh, mm -hmm. That's just an example, but like a random example. But right. uh, but I was like, wow, yeah, that's that's true. Like, who who am I caring? Mm -hmm. You know, what it matters to who? Right. And and the people that are really not closest to you don't get to have a say so in how you feel about yourself. The people who mm. are distant, like like the haters or something, they get to have a right. say so in your mental well being. Why? <laughs> exactly. And the people who you it, trust, and I'm not just talking about family because sometimes family can be very toxic. But I'm talking mm -hmm. about the people you've allowed to speak truth and love into your life and you have your, your best friends, your, your trusted soul friends or, or something, and mm -hmm. they've earned that trust, they get a say so, you know, but exactly. not just any Yahoo who's going to like spit some no. venom out, you know? No. And, and in looking at it that way, you know, that's what, you know, tends to bring on the anxiety. And, and I know in my own life that, there was that time um, and post high school and all when, you know, I wouldn't walk out the door to go somewhere unless I made sure that I was looking good. And I've never been a fashion plate at all, but, <laughs> but I, I didn't want that fear that these total strangers, wherever I was going, would be able to look at me and say, well, that doesn't match or that doesn't look good or that, you know, and, and, it did take me time to to begin to realize that that you know it is the people close to me who I should try to impress or have already impressed. Mm -hmm. And why when I go out to a store or you know something like that 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 I need to worry about that. And um, probably for the last maybe half year now, I've been letting a lot of that go. You know, mm -hmm. and, and when I'm not at work, where you know you have to have a, a certain demeanor and dress in a certain way and, and all that. If I'm going out to the store, I might wear slippers. And, you know, <laughs> that bothers some people. And I'm like, you know what? I'm uh, comfortable. <laughs> you know, I'm comfortable. I'm not trying to impress anybody. <laughs> so what does it matter? <laughs> Something silly as that. But what I'm going to be like corralling of, you back to the state institution. <laughs> exactly. You know, I'll, I'll just shuffle through the store with my uh, slippers on. But, but, um, but, you know, in the past, when, when, you know, I would never think to do something like that because, you know, well, who's going to see me like that? But that was causing a lot of internal anxiety that, yeah. you know, am I looking the way I need to be looking for where I'm going? And, now, if I need to pop into a store or, you know, something like that, and I, I slip on those slippers and out the door and go, I'm not stressed about it. And you know what? Besides my family, no one has commented to my face. That <laughs> to my face. <laughs> yeah. I think that to my face could be the, could be the key phrase there. <laughs> no, well, exactly. Well, but it's also that's why like, I put it because honestly, <laughs> see, and this is where I tried to grow. I don't care who's saying it behind my back. Well, because you know, I don't know they're saying it. I know if you don't know, you know, and that's that's kind of why um, I don't go out of my way to read like comments and things where, like people, like trolly kind of things. Like people are like, mm -hmm. well, like looking at stats. Like when I've put things out that I've written on Amazon or things like that, where you could read like what what position is your book in and what are the comments i don't even i don't even read them because it won't help me either way if it, it will it could if they're really great it'll puff me up probably in a bad way and if they're bad it, it could just drag me down all day do i really need that like you know it's it's also like um 
listening to really, really horrifying news on, like, I want to know what's happening in the world, but a, a short headline will tell me that as right. much as a 10 minute in depth, horrendous story. And sometimes I need a low information diet if I'm working on a project or I really need my creative energies put somewhere. I don't need them dragged down with like, and this baby washed up on shore and here's all the intricate details. I, right. I would get so hijacked because, I mean, talk about your muse leaving. That That's what happens mm -hmm. to me anyway. I just don't have that kind of focus. I need to sh shut out stuff, you know? So I don't, right. I still know what's happening in the world in general, but I'm not gonna go, um, you know, just, I don't need all that extra yeah. stuff. I don't need all the extra voices and I don't need all the extra stuff. So I think there's something to be said for that the the voices, the people who get to speak into your life can be very narrow and that that's completely okay in, in terms mm -hmm. of like, in terms of people who get to speak into your work and into your passions and, and stuff like that. Right. So sometimes I know that you probably have either heard about this or, been affected by this too is that we will take in opinions from everywhere and feedback from everywhere mm -hmm. and be like oh well, this person says it's this has to count and this has to count and this has to count yeah. and then where are we in the end we're like hijacked in a whole bunch of different directions right and and for most people but i'll definitely speak for me will tend to focus on those negative comments yeah so, you know, if I'm looking at all the comments I may receive from people and let's say many of them are positive and, and you get a couple who are, you know, just really shooting it down, that's where I'm going to focus. You know, when the reality is, you know, the vast majority of people really liked it, but I'm focusing on those who didn't and thinking, well, how can I change it? How can I modify what I'm doing? How can, right. you know, what the the minority that didn't like it when the majority did if i change it that majority yeah. might say well what just happened yeah you know, yeah that, but like i say though the, the people that we trust in our lives you know those are the ones that we really should look at you know and like you know i i can ask family you know i mean how does like say this graphic look or you know how did this sound or you know, and, and then honestly, you know, what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. Because they'll, they'll let me know. And, yeah. mainly, you know, so uh, <clears throat> you'll trust her, you know, but yeah, to, to bring in everything, I, I think it is overload. I, I don't think we're meant to have this 24 hour worldwide news coming into our brains, you know, I, I just think that we're not geared for that. You know, we, uh, I believe as social creatures are geared more like we were, uh, you know, way back in, in the early days of, of tribes, mm. you know, I, I need to focus on my tribe. I need to focus on, you know, this grouping of people that mm. I can help and protect and, uh, you know, enjoy life with and, and all that. But once we start hearing of every tribe and all their problems, um, <laughs> I, I just don't know if we can handle all that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, totally. and, and the detail, you know, like you say, you know, baby washes on shore. Well, you know, things like, you know, what's happening around the world as far as terrorism, the war, and right. sure, you can tell me about that. I don't need to see every little graphic detail. Yeah. And, you know, that's where I think a lot of things are getting skewed. And uh, we're not just being given the facts. You know, there is a war, X amount of people were killed or whatever it is. Yeah. You know, I don't need to see them getting killed. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I know that's that might be a matter of opinion that people be like, no, you really have to know and you really have to be alert right. and you have to put out your your Twitter mm -hmm. alerts and tell the world how it is. And I and I can understand that viewpoint, but I'm what how, how I approach that is you go for it. <laughs> you go for it. Yeah. But I, for one, can't do that. I, I have an artistic personality and. Um, that's too heavy for me. I, I just have to, I've just learned that about myself that I need to be very careful with what I let in like my eye gates and my ear gates, you know, like, um, 
I'm, I'm too sensitive and I have to be careful um, because it's just not healthy for me. And so um, that's why I connect, I connect really well. And so that's, that has a great strength and that has a really great weakness. And so I have to, for me, my areas of, of ministry, if you will, of service has nothing to do with world, knowing things worldwide. I, I, I'm not going to be able to help anybody in, a, in Syria or Iraq because I plan to never, never go there. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I'm not going to actually not going to give money to those places either. I'm sorry. I actually give quite a lot. We, we give quite a large percentage of our income to local things. And that's right. how it's just going to be. That's how we're allocating our money. And that's where we're putting our energies right here in our area. I, I'm not going to apologize for it. That's just our decision. Mm -hmm as a family and that's where I feel I can make the biggest difference in the world. And yeah, I do, I do things like podcasting and that's kind of my outreach that goes to other countries, I guess, but I don't feel like that's actually, that's going to do something in the world, but that's not hands-on. And that's to me, not, if it helps, it helps. <laughs> and I'm glad, but actually mm -hmm. my sphere of influence in the world is where I live. And so right. Hearing news about other places has to be pr this peripheral thing for mm -hmm. me. And I, everybody has to come to their own decision right. and find their own journey. But that's why I have a, like a low information diet. I don't, uh, and, and the exception being occasionally there's this like horrendous world event. And I just like everybody else get sucked in and mm -hmm. I'll be on the TV like, oh my gosh, what? I can't believe it. And I'll, And then I'll be like, like kind of heart sick for a week, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh, why God, God? Why? <laughs> well, <laughs> but and, it's not good for me. Well, and I don't think it's good for many people. And, you know, when you, you know, focus on this, I, I don't think, and, and I know definitely for myself, and I, I don't <laughs> think you are either, Lisa, you know, saying that we're not a world community and it's not that mm -hmm. we don't care for others. But we do have to understand limitations, you know, that not all of us can save everybody in the world. And, and that's yeah. not our calling. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I kind of go back to, you know, in a sense that, that loosely defined tribal notion, you know, that, oh, yeah. you know, maybe it's now our neighborhoods or um, condo area or apartment building or, what you know, whatever our main sphere is, uh, right. you know. Are we caring to the best of our ability for the people there? You know, are, are we in our communities present to the people who need that? And, mm -hmm. you know, I think if everybody focused on that, it would go around the world because everybody around the world lives in, in a community a or a tribe or whatever. Right. You know, so right. it, it, if we all right. focused on that, we'd all be doing it. Yeah, yeah. If something's gone wrong, right, overwhelming, it, you know, yeah. resources or emotion or, you know, because if we get overwhelmed in emotions, we're going to shut down the emotions and we might just, you know, decide not to help anybody, you yeah. know, and, and that's not serving any good for ourselves or others. Yeah. And, and shutting down, especially if you're, if your role in the world is like a prophetic, artistic, prophetic, not like, yeah. I'm going to tell the future or something like <laughs> not, I don't mean prophetic like that. I mean, prophetic telling a message. That tells of, a of lot truth. Really. So what, what's the numbers tomorrow? <laughs> Wait a minute. Um, but yeah, prophetic in, in terms of telling a truthful message um, that that is the role of, of the creative, of the artist, you know, of a messenger. Mm -hmm. And you have to be, I think those people in the world have to be very careful that they don't get inundated with too much. And that's why I think, that's why I'm, I've very much promoted spiritual discipline, the spiritual practices for, for creatives, right. because you have to have to. I mean, I think this is non-negotiable that you have to have retreat and unplug and, and get away from media. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's not like negotiable because you, you get drained and you get, will get wiped out. And then there's nothing right. else to give anymore. You're sucked dry. I wanted to read what Rhiannon had here. Um, mm -hmm. She was saying, knowing which burdens, especially emotional, are ours to bear and which aren't, is the key to preserving our emotional energy and strength. Not every fight is ours to pick up. That is just so true. Exactly. And and sometimes we realize that too late. It's like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't. I shouldn't have even picked that up. 
not every tragedy is ours to personally grieve. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Rhiannon, you can actually call in. I know you you think you, you didn't put on your makeup and you didn't brush your hair, but uh, you can totally jump in and uh, I'm, I'm going to get you for this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, Rhiannon's that's been- That's a way to uh, encourage our guests. Yeah, no, she, she's my girl. She has been songwriting and put out and it's not quite ready for totally oh oh she's calling it uh, look what oh, happened oh wait wait okay okay and she's gonna teach me a lesson here wait a minute is it coming in? okay good here she goes yeah i think i have to oh here we go okay maybe she's coming <laughs> oh boy don't you're not mad at me are you you coming in i hope her i hope her internet's not happy hey what there you go. I never oh, yeah. have found that, when that, I first called. There's in. some lag. Mm -hmm. And I noticed too on the on the yeah. replays, sometimes there's crazy like two second lag and you'll see you'll see it off. Mm -hmm. You'll see people going, yeah, and it'll be like way later. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks for calling in. I hope you're not mad at me now. I called in because <laughs> I hear you, Lisa. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> but yeah, you're your point is so. Oh, see, I couldn't hear you. What did you say? Oh, I did just <laughs> enough makeup and threw my hair in a ponytail. It's like I'm going to pretend I'm oh. I'm human today. <laughs> but your point. I'm not going to be pale. In this. Just be who you are. <laughs> yeah, just just be yourself. See, I didn't even like fix my hair. It's all it's all a mess. I was outside all day, and I was like, but, um, it's only it's only worldwide uh, platform that will be saved and recorded for posterity. But other than that, it's nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, someday, someday when I'm some famous writer, you know, and and I'm you know popular and everyone in the world knows me they're going to dig up this video and look like crap. <laughs> no, no, no. that's never That'll how it be happens because here's, here's how it really happens when you see stuff of yourself you're like from you'll be like five years ago ten years ago i was so young then that's what how, that's how it always happens i was so young i look so young <laughs> It'll be one of those shows, you know, where, where were they, you know, in their younger uh, years? <laughs> I, uh, I've never been oh. young, no. <laughs> I, no, no, really, I was an adult all of my childhood. I was super shy. I was a perfectionist. I just had to be this adult, mature person to impress mm. everyone. And so I was so much older than my childhood would should have been. And then I become an adult and I hit about 20 and I try to revert, but I just couldn't get it. Then I hit my mid thirties and it's like, oh, let's be a child again. <laughs> I didn't get to have it the first time. Let's just be a complete idiot all the time. And I don't know, some days I, I do it well, some days I fail. <laughs> you, you're like never, <laughs> yeah, you're never too old to, to be a kid. No, no. But but to your point, Rhiannon, about not not picking up burdens that aren't ours, that's so true. How can how do you know when they aren't though? I guess that's that's kind of my big question is that like how do you know before it's too late? For me, I had a, okay, I don't know, this is probably gonna sound kind of weird because a lot of people don't understand it. Um I feed off of emotional mm -hmm. energy. I can sometimes meet someone and just know, no, nah, I don't like this person. Um, it's not always something I can identify, but it's, uh, some people call it an empath or whatever. And, and I distanced myself from people so much for so long because they just exhausted me. And it, it, whatever energy feeling was overwhelming to me because I took on all of their burdens, all their celebrations, and I had no identity of my own for what I really thought and felt. I just felt what everyone else felt. And over the last several years, I've learned to kind of pick and choose. Like, okay, I can get close to this issue. I need distance from this one. And I just can't let myself be guilty when everyone's like, oh, you should be crying because this tragedy thing happened. And you should 
I, I can't feel guilty for if it doesn't yeah. affect me or if it, it does. I have to sort of preserve my own peace and my own energy. Yeah. So um, there, my mother is a huge animal advocate mm-hmm. on Facebook. She's always trying to get some animal adopted or sharing this charity that's doing some work. And for a while, I did that too. And then it just got to be too much mm-hmm. for me. I couldn't write because I was so bogged down by all of all of that energy. And so it's like, okay, that's her battle. I have yeah. to walk away. And I, I've successfully done it. I still care, but it's, it's in the back of my mind. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, an information I, I can expose myself to so much before I move on with what I know I have to be. I'm, I can't help but be passionate and about and that's where I, I find peace. If I can't help but be passionate, that's yeah, where I'm Yeah, that's, that's a good point. And, and there's so many, the thing is, there's so many good causes that really are good. You know, like someone's like, oh, mm-hmm. um, you know, childhood cancer and my, my project, my project, or, you know, diabetes or whatever it is. And you're like, yeah, it's a really, that's a really worthy cause. And, um, right. but... I have a, I have causes I'm doing, you know, like my son has autism and, and there's like, we're doing an autism fun run. We're doing an autism walk mm-hmm. and I can't, I can't do them all or any, or any of them. Like I, it's not one of, actually it's not one of my causes. I, I will do certain things to support it, but I'm not like on all of the boards or all of the things. And it's because I do other causes and I can only do so many. And it's not that my heart mm-hmm. isn't in it. Obviously I have autism awareness literally every day. Um, <laughs> I like it or not. And so it's, it's like, there's so many worthy causes, but you do have to narrow it. You do have to, because, mm-hmm. um, it's hard for, if, if you have a bleeding heart, you know, you're like, but I can't bleed constantly. I, I there isn't enough transfusions in the world, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Well, and, and, you know, it's not like we're the only people who can do this. You know, and, and I, I think, you know, again, that's where we have to look at the how can we encourage the people, you know, maybe closer to these tragedies to do what they can do, because there is only so much resources and, and so much emotion. And there's always going to be something bigger out there, you know, and yeah. I mean, who knows what we're going to find yeah, on our planet, but I mean, there's always something more that can be done and one of the things that helped me to realize you know when we look at nature is if you ever stop to watch uh you know a bug moving around doing what it does you know an ant or whatever i thought about it for a while you know when you look at what does that bug view as their world you know and their world is very small and they have no knowledge of you know, like what's across the street, <laughs> let alone the size and scope of, of this earth. Mm. So, you, you know, you just wonder, we're aware of the scope of, of our earth, but is that necessarily a good thing for us? Mm. Yeah, and, and being like now that we have 24-hour cable news, should we have 24-hour mm-hmm. cable news? Like, it's possible, but is it, is it beneficial? <laughs> like, right. I, Cause they have to fill it with something. And so then you turn on, if you turn it on <clears throat> like CNN headline news or Fox news, God forbid, or something, then you, you turn it on and then you're like, how can you listen and be anything but anxious? Even right. I love, I love listening to NPR, but I started just turning it off because it makes me crazy because it's never like you want to hear something good it's never good no it's always something like and, and you know there's going to be this kind of fraud or there's this horrendous thing and even if it's good journalism it's like you know there goes 15 more minutes of anxiety producing news basically. right and, and, and that's you know, and that's what I like with what uh, you had said, Rihanna, about, you know, not feeling guilty about that. You know, that uh, I think that becomes that hard step for, uh, you know, many people that, you know, if I don't give to all of these different charities, then, you know, I, I'm worthless. And, you know, people are going to think I don't care, or, you know, something like that. And so I, I think part of that key is that awareness. How do I, uh, you know, 
feel comfortable with who I am and what my abilities are without feeling guilty for what I'm not able to do. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Um, there was something I thought of earlier when you were talking. It's like, okay, so if a tree is growing, wherever it's growing, that it everything it has to do in its life has to happen right mm-hmm. there. Okay, so it shelters birds, it provides food, it um, the leaves fall and and decompose, and it that provides nutrients for the soil to then further supply for the tree. So everything happens right there, yeah. and then you have a bird that might you know fly off somewhere else and. Uh, carry berries or whatever and so so it has a little bit wider range and then here's humans and we had our communities um, but we stayed within our communities and then there's (laughs) internet (laughs) and my community because of where I am and my certain situation in life most of my community is online Mm -hmm. so I have I have more British friends than I have American friends (laughs) and I care I care about some of their issues more than I do some Mm. here at home. So I can't really be as hands on, but, but that's where my Mm. heart is because that's, that's it, what I'm exposed to. So it's, it's something um, that can be peace stealing. Mm. It can be, but you have to kind of, you kind of have to discover where your circle is, what you can and can't do. And, and just try to be as functional as you can through it. Am I providing for them? Are they providing right. for me? Is it a good relationship or is it draining somebody? Mm-hmm. And then, then you have to kind of find your boundaries because we kind of live in a, a boundary-less society with the internet and with 24-hour yeah. news yeah. and all of that. Um, so it's just something we kind of have to be aware of or it can really easily just Totally over. agree. Right. Totally. Yeah. Agree. And I like to find your community and work within your community, whether it's yeah. close to you or, or far away from you, but it, it's your identified community. Yeah. Yeah. Because you right. can, you can invest in legitimate ways long distance now that you, that you couldn't before. Like, well, my grandparents, I wouldn't even be here if my grandparents didn't pen pal my, my grandmother, <laughs> my grandmother was like a missionary in Appalachia and Kentucky or something like that. And <laughs> this, her like superior or something said here, I've been, I've been pen palling um, World War II, you know, GIs, but, but we're mm-hmm. done with this program. So just burn all these letters. And she was like, no way I'm going to write them, you know? So she snuck, <laughs> she started pen palling. Well, that's how she met my grandpa. And in her sneaky little rebellious way. And they got pretty serious pretty quickly. And then they met each other and got engaged like immediately. And, um, but like pen palling was the old, was old school, obviously, you know, before, but, but you can develop really invested, really emotionally available long distance relationships and and especially now that you can Skype and you can see a person and you can react to their reactions, you can look them in the eye. It mm-hmm. it can be it you can invest, but that's the thing like you're talking about, Rhiannon, that you can have have your attention scattered and and really diversified. But the challenge is to like hone them into to your inner circle and to your tribe, to your small group of people that you're actually investing your real self, not your not just your best self, but like the, the, the whole you or whatever, because the other thing is that we can also hide behind screens and, and they, and it's actually not as close to real life maybe as, as it would be in person. But, but I think it's, it can be completely legitimate relationships and friendships that we have, but it's the, the trick is like, you're saying boundaries is like not Mm -hmm. letting every, you know, every single person in and all the news and all the other baloney. Yeah, very true. Yeah, and then, then sometimes you find someone that's like a thousand miles away, and you just write a song and then send them lyrics and say, "So, how messed up is this?" And you know, <laughs> an hour later, that person has helped you write a song, and you know, her her name is Lisa. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the internet has been an amazing thing. I wouldn't be the person I am now without it. Um, but there are a lot of downfalls too. You have to find who you're investing in right. or you're not. Yeah, yeah. 
It's true. Yeah, and, and I, I have found amazing, amazing friendships. Um, you know, some, some of them I've rekindled from like junior high and now that, that's been amazing. I have like, oh, where have you been? And, and realize that these are the same people there. They're exactly the same that I remember them. They really haven't changed and that's a good thing. And, and then finding new friendships and, you know, that these are people I would have never, never met because our worlds would have never bumped into each other, but that's been incredibly enriching. Yeah. And, um, and then just, you know, getting to live that. I, I just feel like I live in the best time ever. I don't know if everybody feels like that, but <laughs> I feel like I was born at the perfect time. And um, to, to be able to take advantage of all those opportunities to connect like that, because, um, I mean, gosh, this is like, if, if you had told me when I was 12 or something that I'd be able to do something like this, I, I would have been like, yeah, okay, that's like Star Trek. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beam me up. But yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. But in terms of like, I guess we should maybe draw back to our original be at peace like a rock, how to nature leads to center peace. <laughs> um, in terms of like, like being able to chill out and, and truly be at peace. Rian and I was, since you're, since you called in, now I can ask you questions. Do you, how much do you get out in nature and how much do you find that uh, peace giving to you? Like, do you, do you ever draw into that or what do you do to to kind of chill down? Um, a couple of years ago, I started walking. But my favorite time of day to walk is between 9 and 11 p.m. <laughs> because that's actually when the park mm -hmm. closes. So I could just walk around the, the, there's a trail around the lake and I could walk around that maybe four or five, six times in the darkness. I had my music in my ear and I could watch the stars and just be, that was so mm -hmm. peaceful to me. And then I got sick. Um, I actually had a spider bite that I did not get walking through the park. <laughs> I got it um, at home, but I got a spider bite and was very sick for several weeks. By the time I was healthy enough to walk again, um, it was turning cold. You know, Missouri sucks in the late winter or late fall, early winter. And so I joined a gym. And for the last couple of years, or a couple of years since then, I've just belonged to the gym and I don't really get out in nature much but the other night um I just I was tired of technology I was tired of people I needed some space and I went out to the park and walked back behind the lake took my guitar and a couple notebooks mm -hmm. and I just sat there for maybe an hour hour and a half and played and the sun was out so then people showed <laughs> up and I I got out of there <laughs> but nature is can be peaceful to me, um, but I'm not really an outside kind of person most of the time. So the circumstances have to be just mm -hmm. right for me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I can be, I can go places in my head. I can watch a movie or read a book and and have nature that mm -hmm. way, or you know, a different place for all that matters. And um, I find peace in a lot of different mm -hmm. ways. Yeah, I'm I, I'm I'm my most introverted mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was trying to get outside and then I was like, oh, if I sit down, <laughs> it was like, if you give a mouse a cookie, you know, I was like, oh, and if I sit down, then, the, then I'm going to get wet because the grass is kind of damp. But if I go inside and I get a blanket, I'll probably just stay inside because it's warmer. And then I was just like, it turned into this big thing. And I was like, do I sit in a chair and then get uncomfortable? And <laughs> it was like, just... <laughs> Just, I don't know what was going on, but let's just say I was not a, a rock and I was not at peace. It's like, sit down, get up, sit in my swing. I don't know what I'm doing. And I just, I think I just sat down for a minute and I was like, it's too breezy. I'm going in. And that was, it was, you know, that was like, I mean, this weekend I was outside quite a lot, but sometimes I'll go outside to just like get a breather and just clear my head. I'll, I'll, I'll unplug my computer so that I know that it'll, my, my laptop so that I know it'll uh, need to be plugged in. And then when it needs to be plugged in, then I know that's my get off the computer. You need a rest signal, you know, mm -hmm. like I don't have any juice. So I don't have any juice. Like I really need a break. And so that's kind of my signal to just decompress and try to get outside or just try to get something else going on for a little while. And, um, and it was like one of those, like, 
I don't know. I was just could not settle down. And um, this weekend, thankfully, we got got a bike ride in and got to be some friends and stuff like that. But yeah, there's times when I'm just like kind of all over the place and being outside won't calm me down. And that's why I've been doing, I was telling you, I don't know if you heard this part, Rian, if you were on yet, but we were talking about, I love this analogy of the lizard brain wrapped in a monkey brain wrapped in a human brain. Did you hear that part? <laughs> I don't know if you heard it, but I don't know. Oh, okay. So, so I've been thinking more on those terms about thinking about things to do to distract myself so that my, so there's the, your thoughts and then there's the part of you that thinks about your thoughts, you know? And so I'm like that part of me that thinks about my thoughts can get a break from the, the chatter part. And so if you give that the thinking chatter part something to do, then the other part gets a break. I don't even know if that's real, but, but it's like real to me, I guess. I don't know. Maybe you could speak to that, Chris. Do you know anything about, since you're the psychology guy, what's the part? <laughs> maybe, maybe that's one of those unanswerable questions. But if there's the thinker, if there's thinking going on in your head, but you're able to mm -hmm. think about your thinking. What's that other part called? What's the thing? Or maybe, maybe that's still up for grabs. <laughs> it depends what theory you're going for. Um, you know, you could go into the Freud it. with the id, ego, and super ego stuff. But uh, no, I, you know, I think we are we're, we're geared in, into the, the the cognitive side, the thinking side, and then you know the side that. Is, is a bit more free and and more as you're saying you know these you know kind of like that artsy you know that that you know I, i'm not bound by these you know um necessarily logic way of thinking that that the other part of the brain would want mm. um so it gives you know a little bit more of a freedom i would i would say um mm. but we're, we're complex beings I just realized, I'm just realizing now that it's after nine totally and I, I lost complete track of time. Oh, no. um, I, you could have you went like this, Chris. Been like, I, I lost. I wasn't looking either. So <laughs> <laughs> I guess one of us has to be looking. I know. I'm not, I, well, what's funny is that I all of a sudden my p battery power just went to red because it's like critical. And I'm like, either I plug in or I have to go. But um, I was like, what's that red thing? And then I'm like, oh. And then I, it's right next to the clock. And I'm like, what? 914? But um, yeah, I, now that you mention it, I'm looking down and it says 914 on my computer, but <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I'm listening to the wonderful conversation and, and glad that we have a uh, Rana who called in. And I'm just going with it. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure how this would go because I was, as I was thinking about be a piece like the rock. I was like, where do you go from there? I don't know. It seems settled. <laughs> <laughs> I was never settled with our conversations. <laughs> yeah, it can go anywhere. But yeah, so so next next month we should maybe we should take a vote. Maybe we should ask people what we should talk about. But uh, if, it, if you have I'm any ideas, idea. yeah, if you have any ideas about a to topic for May, we'll try to get together on Sundays still, if, that's, if you think that's good, Chris. No, that, that works perfect for me. So you know, if yeah. that's where, where people would like us, that's good with me. So tentatively, anyway, we could do, do two Sundays in May, maybe the second and the fourth Sunday. We'll have to, we'll have to check for sure, because I'll... Now that it's getting warmer out and it's getting nicer out, then it's like, I'm not sure like scheduling this, but hopefully <laughs> we can meet at least once a, once a month, but hopefully twice. And we'll, we'll figure we'll something out. What we do. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it. Hopefully Sundays at eight Eastern. And uh, this was really fun. And thank you. Mother's Day. Oh, it's Mother's Day? The, the eight. eight? Oh. Yeah, I, that would be bad. That would that would be bad. probably bad. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, yeah. kids. <laughs> I got a hard thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, mom. Probably bad. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to take off the, well, the mothers who will listen yeah, to we'll, us and. Uh, yeah, we'll have to look. Carefully. But we'll figure some dates. <laughs> <laughs> the 
There are five Sundays right. in May, though, so three and five work. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Scheduling. Ooh, I, I like this. I, I think we're creating a staff here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will send you um, an invoice for my <laughs> hourly rate. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> that was really quick. <laughs> I'm joking about I'm staff, really and I'm getting an email now with an invoice on it. I just got an invoice in my email box just now. Brandon. <laughs> what? That's crazy. <laughs> that that, that, that must be in euros. That can't be American. That's euros. That's oh, it's sterling. It's pound sterling. <laughs> Um, but I, I do like, uh, Lisa, your idea that maybe if we can get people to, uh, you know, contact us about topics, uh, you know, find us on Twitter or, you know, go to our websites or whatever. And, uh, you know, I, I know we can always come up with something, but uh, it would be nice to hear from listeners as to what might interest them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, it would. I don't know. We could. Yeah, it could it could be any it could be anything, I guess. Then it could get really mm -hmm. juicy. You know, I um exactly. yeah, boy, gosh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> but um sounds good. Well, we'll keep so if you're listening to this now, if we, we still have people listening, so thank you yeah. so much for well, hanging. We haven't lost anybody us. yet. So. Unless everybody's fallen asleep at their computers or their phones. <laughs> well, that's but, possible, but nobody's logged off yet. So. Yeah, well, I know. Thank you everybody so much. But keep an eye out on our Twitter on our Twitter feed. So I'm at Lisa Delay. You might know that already. And Chris, I don't yours is different, isn't it, from what it is here or is that a same Yeah, thing? unfortunately but, I'm putting it uh, typing it now, but unfortunately okay. for Twitter it's life journey blog. No S in it where okay. the rest of my social media is always life's journey blog, but that was taken on Twitter. So, so yeah, so you can keep a look everything out. but this. <laughs> so yeah, you can keep a look out either way. We we should probably just hashtag. So if we have a hashtag, hmm, if we had a good hashtag, we just could hashtag that every month and then be out there. We'll have Does to our new staff member have an idea about a hashtag? <laughs> Right on, put her on the spot. Exactly. <laughs> Go. Hashtag, creative hashtag now. No, but um, but we'll put we'll put out Twitter stuff. In there. What? What I said, I have nothing. Nothing. <laughs> um, That's a long hashtag. It's I have nothing hashtag. But, so we'll yeah we'll put stuff out on the Twitters and then you can join us up in May mm -hmm. up with us in May and if you have ideas till then. Um, put them out. So my my specialties are so Chris is, Chris, your specialties are counseling, counseling, addiction, uh, philosophy, spirituality, rocks, <laughs> inner peace, peace, inner mindful, peace, mindfulness, mindfulness. You're just being you're just being meditation. You know, I have, I have to, again, hang on. <laughs> I'm seriously going to lose all my juice in a second. I have two, I'm on 2% oh, no. or something. Okay. Not good. Well, I'm, I'm glad but you did that quick because, you know, dancing wasn't going to work for me, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Don't go south on me, Chris. We're almost done. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's let dinner show. I'll put my slippers on. We're going to start shuffling out of here. <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. See what happens at, at, at 9, 9.20 on the East Coast? after hours party here uh, yeah and and my my sort of I wouldn't say specialties but some of the things I'm kind of playing around with now are well I'm kind of a spiritual formation person with um, spiritual practices spiritual disciplines and I've really been toying around with a lot of deconstruction stuff right now like deconstruction reconstruction and those are going to be the guys from the Deconstructionist podcast are actually going to be my guests next Friday, and they are hilarious. Oh, my gosh. This is, this is my favorite quote. I'm going to tweet this out later for everybody to, to kind of, you know, bring them in to watch, <laughs> listen to the show. <laughs> this is Adam Nerlock and John Williamson. Adam Nerlock goes, the church has become like a big basket of puppies 
all licking each other. This is the kind of stuff they say. <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> I was like, Listen for more. <laughs> I was like, Adam, stay off the crack, okay? Enough of you. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? I just like had to back away from the mic and just laugh and laugh and laugh because he's hilarious. <laughs> he, it's like he's on methamphetamine. I, I, don't know, I don't know what's going on with him. It, they're just so funny and so enthusiastic and, and they're just so much fun. But the whole idea of like deconstruction and reconstruction, because we, once you have outside influences into your, into your belief systems, then you, you have to question what you've believed or what you've known. It doesn't mean you throw everything out, but you have to assess. And I think if you don't, you're either, you know, you're kind of, lying to yourself or you're shutting things out and that's kind of part of I think attaining wisdom and attaining maturity is that you um you have a critical eye and you have some some amount of skepticism about what you know and what comes in too so what what comes in that's new and and just that you we we don't want to stop ever thinking you know I think that's that's kind of what can can happen like I know growing up thinking was kind of discouraged. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you just believe the party line. Do not ask too many questions and just go along your merry way. And I, I remember saying this one thing. Um, I remember exactly where I was. I was in the back seat of a car. We were going somewhere. And I said something like to these two people who were like, uh, they were dating or engaged or something at the time, like an older brother and sister to me. I just adored these two. And I said, you know, in the Bible, I'm like, I'm like 16 or something. I'm like, you know, in the Bible, uh, the snake starts talking to Eve and says, you know, and, and I'm like, and the snake's talking and did snakes really talk? Is, is that, is that how it went down? And I'm just finding that really hard to believe. And, and I wasn't doubting the Bible, I was just asking a question, but they're like, well, you know what, if you don't believe that snakes talks, then what else are you not going to believe in the Bible? Yeah, you have to believe that. I was like, and, and right there, it was like a domino effect start happening in my brain. And I was like, I have to believe that snakes talked or I don't, or I have to throw out everything in the Bible. It was just like one of those like crazy, like just insane. I remember just thinking like, really? Like if I don't believe that snakes didn't talk like what what and and i remember just thinking that's what i have to believe to be in this club this this particular sect you know the small and i'm like maybe it could be something else maybe it could be uh, you know i mean like there could be a hundred answers i could have gotten and they could have all been wrong too. Like, but but it could be like, well, it could be this, it could be that, it could be this. But just the fact that I was basically told, like, shut up, ask <laughs> any questions, snakes talk, now shut up. <laughs> I was kind of like, I was so out, but I love these two so much. And um, I still talk to them, I still love them, but but I was so I was so dissatisfied with that answer. It was the shut your brain off and don't ask too many questions answer, kind of in a nice way, but that was basically what they were telling me. And you know, to me, to me, that that attitude is sort of what I grew up with too. It's like, okay, God is not the wizard behind the curtain from Wizard of Oz. Okay, <laughs> mm -hmm. if, if, if investigate God. If you pull back that curtain and try to get to know God better, it's not like the whole thing goes poof and the illusion's gone. If God is mm -hmm. really what you think he is, you can dig into that and. It will remain true. If it's not, we kind of need to know that before we invest our entire <laughs> lives in this thing. I know. And so all these years, I never, I thought, if you doubt, you're not saved. If you question, you're not saved. If any of these things, you know, you have to throw it all out. Yeah. And then, you know, you have that thing where you get smacked upside the head. You have to question. And then you go, oh, mm -hmm. this means for faith and more beauty and and I get to understand so much beyond what I thought possible had I never questioned had I never wondered and and they mm -hmm. act like it's this big thing I'm like dude if, if God is who you say God is he can handle me mm -hmm. asking a few questions and uh, 
I, it has done nothing well, better and, my I mean, the Bible is loaded with times that, you know, God is being questioned and yeah. you know, the apostles themselves question Jesus to his face. So, yeah, yeah you know, I, I think it's necessary for us to question because then we make it our own. And, yeah. and that's where that relationship with God and, and the spiritual world exists is when we make it our own, not just do what others tell us, uh, you know, to do and and there, there's plenty of examples that, you know, you can show people from the Bible that, that God was questioned and mm. most of them lived. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, stop asking questions. But maybe I, I, that should be Well, they were, you know, pillars of salt and all, but, you know. <laughs> she didn't question. She was just like, my house, my house. <laughs> They're like. We, we need some pepper. We also need pepper for our next meal. <laughs> Shave off some of mom for dinner tonight, if you don't mind. <laughs> so, uh, I know that's messed up, but yeah. <laughs> so uh, maybe that'll be, uh, you know, one of our uh, upcoming right. discussions might need to be, you know, questioning yeah, uh, God or something like that, yeah. come up in some way. And, uh, you know. Yeah. Look, like look about at, at things from different perspectives. Yeah, faith and doubt. Talk about that. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, I heard a fantastic. I'll have to save. I'll have to save this, but it was Greg Boyd who was I was listening to on a podcast, and he was talking about um, belief and certainty versus covenant, and how co contract versus covenant. And it was it was it was so good, and it it makes you able to relax within within your faith walk, because you don't have to think about things as, as contractual, like if I do this and do this, then I'm on the outs. And right. I have to be certain about all these things. But covenant just means all you're doing is promising to walk in the same direction for your whole life. And doubt is not just fine, but expected. It's, it's part mm -hmm. of it. It's, it's totally part of it. It's just walking in the same direction. And you're just promising to do that. That's it. It's, and, it, and then it's, it's comparable with marriage then. So it's marriage is a uh, contract. I mean, it can be. <laughs> it can be a contract. But marriage is a covenant where, you, where you're saying, I'm going to walk, we're going to walk the same way the whole time. And it's not always going to be great. <laughs> but when it's not, we've already decided we're going to walk the same way, you know, and that because you know, it's, you're going to not always be in love or, you know, things aren't always going to be awesome. But when, when they're not, you already said, well, we decide to walk the same way. So it's, it's kind of, the, it's about faithfulness more than it is about, so faith, the opposite of faith is faithlessness, not doubt, you know? So mm -hmm. anyway, it was, it was really good. I'll have to, I'll have to get some notes up or something and do that. But it's, it's a very different way than I think the enlightenment might've, and maybe, Protestant Reformation. <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Um, so you have you have it up on us there, Chris. But um, in terms of like, let's you know, science is about certainty and proving things, and so then it just bleeds over into religion and faith and all that stuff too. But mm -hmm. it didn't always. It's not like it always worked like that. Anyway, that's true. Should, I should stop. And this is where else. <laughs> See. This is why I think we, we uh, have the uh, ability for a whole uh, blab and then some just on this yeah. topic. We, right. we need to figure out a good uh, title and, uh, and and see how we can make this happen. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll go back and forth a little bit and, and mull it over and get some dates down and then shoot them out. All right, everybody. Good. Well, thank you, everybody, for, for sticking yeah. with us. This week of sparkle is already gone to my head, so I'm I'm, not, I'm out of control. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, thank you, and thank you for being our our lovely guest tonight, Rhiannon. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. So uh, yeah, thank you everybody for being here, and wish everybody a good night, and we'll start posting when our next uh, live is. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.